the sun. Bright, beautiful, and the leading cause of skin cancer, the sun is the ultimate provider of life and energy. But what if we could harness that same energy right here on Earth? To do that, we would have to go nuclear. If we could produce the same amount of energy that the sun does on Earth, we could provide enough energy for the entire world. To examine this idea further, we will first look into the core conceptual ideas behind nuclear power. Then we will look into the drawbacks and restraints of it, and finally into how it is playing into the world today. We've known about nuclear power for a while now. Specifically, it was used during World War II to create the atomic bomb and is used to make nuclear reactors. However, both the atomic bombs of World War II and nuclear reactors built today are made using nuclear fission. The reactor that scientists are trying to build would be powered by nuclear fusion. Fission and fusion are different in two key ways. Nuclear fission takes the nucleus of a large atom and splits it into two. Nuclear fusion takes the nuclei of two small atoms and smashes them together. Both create massive amounts of energy, but nuclear fusion creates astronomically larger amounts. And using the word astronomical isn't a stretch either, as according to NASA, the energy from the sun and stars are produced using nuclear fusion. Back here on Earth, we're already using nuclear fission in our power plants to provide energy. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, one-fifth of all of the United States energy comes from nuclear power annually. But if we could create a viable nuclear reactor, we could provide enough energy for not just the entire United States, but to the whole world. Furthermore, while we often equate nuclear reactors with catastrophic meltdowns and toxic nuclear waste, a nuclear fusion reactor would have virtually no waste emissions, would pose fewer risks, and could require less materials to power it. Using just a single cup of seawater, a nuclear fusion reactor could produce the same amount of energy as an entire barrel of oil. So you might be thinking, cool, if a nuclear fusion reactor is so great, why don't we build one? The answer to this question is quite simple. Money. Okay, so it's a little more complicated than that. But right now, we simply don't have the required resources or materials to build a working fusion reactor. Specifically, it requires a great deal of engineering prowess and creative thinking to build a fusion reactor that produces more energy than it consumes. Scientists have already built several fusion reactors. You could even build one at home as an experiment. But that's just what all these reactors have been. Giant experiments. All have been very expensive, but none have been successful in creating a fusion or a reactor that could provide energy commercially. This is leading many to think that all the research and funding going into nuclear power isn't worth it. It's like if you wanted to make a light bulb powered by a potato, but you'd have to grow an entire potato farm before you could start it. Furthermore, once the reactor is built, it would require maintenance a nuclear fusion reactor would sort of be like a miniature sun on planet Earth. And I don't know if you know anything about the sun, but it's hot. Really hot. It's this heat that allows for nuclear fusion to take place. Because of the ma sun's massive size, it gets to cheat a little. Instead of getting super hot, it uses the pressure in its core to sort of force fusion. But a mini sun wouldn't have that size advantage. For reference, the sun is about 5,000 degrees Celsius. According to Eurofusion, the European Consortium for Fusion Energy, a fusion reactor would have to reach temperatures of over 100 million degrees. Forget about Fahrenheit or Celsius, because that's 100 million degrees. Think Raiders of the Lost Ark face melting, but instead of the Nazis' faces melting, the entire cave and surrounding areas melt with them. Now, 
most people don't want their faces melted off. So if something were to go wrong with the reactor, or it would simply require maintenance, that would likely have to be performed by AI, which adds on to the already mounting costs. With all of these hurdles put in place, people are beginning to wonder if it even makes sense to continue pursuing nuclear fusion. All right, so nuclear fusion is kind of tricky, and many believe it to be impossible. Bummer. But there are some who still believe in its potential and are working and making great leaps in science and technology that are anything but a bummer. There are many projects in the works, but one of the most advanced by far is the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER for short. ITER is housed in France and has over 35 countries contributing to it. The ITER has already begun construction and will consist of millions of different components. According to the World Nuclear Association, the ITER will be a tokamak. A tokamak is an abbreviation for a Russian term that in English means toroidal chamber with magnetic coils. Yeah, I don't know what toroidal means either. Basically, in simpler terms, a tokamak is a giant magnetic donut-shaped chamber. I'm not sure whose idea it was to go with toroidal instead of donut-shaped, but honestly, I'm kind of hoping that they got fired from the marketing department. These magnetic coils are super conductive and are capable of producing the heat required for fusion. In order to encase this heat, the entire reactor will be encased in a giant cryostat chamber capable of reaching temperatures near absolute zero. So, by placing the world's hottest donut in a giant, really cold fridge, not only will we be able to produce massive amounts of energy, but we will also be creating one of the largest temperature gradients in the known universe. Like I've said before, this impossible leap and miracle of science has already begun construction and could be up and running by 2025. However, it's not till the late 2040s at least that the people behind ITER think that it could be ready for commercial use. Nuclear fusion still has a long way to go, and many have pointed out that by the time it's viable, many countries will already have clean emission energy sources put in place. This leads many to think that nuclear fusion was a waste, a fool's errand. But I disagree. In pursuing nuclear fusion, we have created incredible ideas in science, technology, and engineering that are anything but a waste or useless. Even if nuclear fusion ends up being useless, the incredible innovations and discoveries we have made along the way will be well worth it. And it proves that nothing, not even the power of the cosmos, is unattainable. It's like that old saying, shoot for nuclear fusion. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars.